let's talk about politics. Because our po- politicians love to spin things, don't they, Dr. Rod? Love, like, that's... I certainly do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, remember, I remember that uh, the TV show with Michael J. Fox, you know, Spin City. It wasn't, it, I must admit, I watched that show as a child or, uh, you know, as a, you know, as a teenager or whatever when it, when it was out. Um, and I never got it until I recently rewatched it. I'm like, I understand what spin means now. Ah, spin city. Now, because they're politicians, it, they're, the whole show is just about them trying to spin things. And so we know that the political leaders tend to do that. But when we spin, we tend to blame and there's a political story I want to talk about where their response to a disaster or to a crisis was blaming. And I don't, I don't know whether you guys uh, you know, heard about all the hurricanes that have been happening over, over here. I say here because I'm in the Dominican Republic. We had a hurricane a few weeks ago pass our island. Praise God, it was meant to cross straight on my city. At last minute, it uh, it diverted and went straight up. Praise God. But then uh, Florida had Hurricane Ian. Um, I was about to say attack it, but not like it attacked it, but it was it pretty much attacked it. Um, but it, Hurricane Ian hit Florida. Uh, you're going back now a week or so ago now, and I found it really interesting how the government actually responded to that. Initially, they started to, well, there's actually this video. And once again, the link is below if you want to, if you want to watch this video. But uh, uh, Joe Biden, President Joe Biden, was, was standing there at a press conference with Ron DeSantis, who's the, the um, governor of, of Florida and and possible future president. I don't know. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe we'll play in that. But, you know, let's, let's not get too political. Uh, but Joe Biden was sitting there talking about this, this hurricane and how it's caused so many more billion dollars dis- disasters at this time to the more. He's like, right in the middle where people have no water, no electricity, no homes, everyone just wanting to know what the government's response are. What does he do? He says, well, it's only proof that it's climate change, right? And you should see Ron DeSantis' face in the background. He just has this 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 such angry look. But you can tell he's being political and he's trying to he's he's trying to keep a straight face. But it's like his people, the people that he's leading, are just looking looking to their leaders for what what do we do now? And what do the leaders do? They blame climate change. Dr. Rod, how do we, how do we get to a point where we as leaders in the face of a crisis, how do we avoid blaming? Because it's a, it's a difficult one. Well, I mean, ultimately, you do want to get to the bottom of any crisis and hold people accountable if, in fact, they are. Yeah. And, uh, you know, as a result of any disaster, really, the, the hurricanes, we call them cyclones here in Australia, um, flood events, any, any kind of, well, we used to call them acts of God, remember, in, yeah. the, in the bad old days? <laughs> if anything bad happened, any natural disaster happened, we used to call that an act of God. Um, and, and, and we do, we, we do tend to, to want to find someone, someone to blame. And um, of late, a lot of political leaders have been saying, oh, well, there's been a flood here, there's been a fire here. Um, a hurricane here, that's just proof, isn't it, of, of climate change. Now, I think that's wrong on a number of fronts. One, blaming, laying any kind of blame in the middle of having to deal with a disaster actually helps nobody. Yeah. Second, and this is somewhat controversial, but I, I would stand on this. Science tells us you cannot pin any one disaster to climate change because climate change is this very, very long term Mm -hmm. phenomenon. And um, you you just cannot do that. So they need to be called out because they're being unscientific. Mm -hmm. And um, look, I don't even know whether a lot of scientists would, would fall into this trap. But that that's another thing as well. It's it's just too cute by half to do this. Yeah. 
Um, Especially because and, they based, like him basing the fact that the cyclones are getting worse, he based it on the cost of the cyclone, or sorry, the yeah, hurricane. Yeah. And, mm. and it's only because there was a government law that changed the where the government was giving flood insurance or whatever to this certain area of Florida, which was all on the beachfront, which was poor area because no insurance company would insure there. So it was only small houses there. But then they they lobbied the government, wealthy billionaire developers lobbied the government to put in this flood ins this government flood insurance. And so the multi billionaires would be able to build these massive, massive mansions all along this this waterfront. And I and and then now that now that the hurricane comes through, it's you know caused more damage. Yes, because you built more expensive buildings there. That's why it costs more now. <laughs> and and I just find it really interesting that people are always like like blaming this this stuff of like, well, you know, climate change like no, if you actually look at weather patterns you have built on this small bit of land that is right between two two different oceans that have two different climates. There is always going to be certain weather patterns when they when they match and in that area. I mean, I, I just I even ask myself. I don't know. I'm sure there's reasons, and and I can't speak for it because I actually live in in a hurricane zone now. Like we literally in hurricane season, and and everyone, all our neighbours, everyone that we talk about, it's like, oh yeah, it's hurricane season. Oh okay, it's just another hurricane's coming. That that's what it is. It's like, why would you build something in the middle of you know of, of where everything is? So yeah, I think it's funny that we'll grab onto a statistic that actually isn't really relevant. And then jump on a bandwagon, um, and and to your point, it's like it doesn't help anyone. I'm looking here. You're my leader. I'm looking to you for support. How are you going to help me? You're just going to blame it on the weather, blame it on gas guzzling cars and 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 and, and coal. You know, like yeah. So mm -hmm. so yeah. And the other thing too, Craig, to keep in mind is. There won't be consensus over an issue like oh, climate change causes or we, we can now put to bed uh, any debate about climate change. You're never going to get uh, un unanimity of opinion, yeah. but you will get that unanimity, that that um, you, united um, community yeah. if you directly deal with the impact of the disaster on people at the time. Yeah. And look, you know, we, we, what they ought to be saying is, look, we, we will investigate later. Yeah. We, is there something in government policy? Is there something in human behaviour? Is there something that we can't necessarily control, like long-term shifts in climate and so on? But I think you raised a really important point, and that is why do we allow people to build in areas that we know based on long historical records are subject to the effects of natural phenomenon. Yeah. We're having a similar debate here in Australia right now because there's a lot of rain falling in parts of Queensland, New South Wales and Victoria. And there's been quite a debate going on in, uh, in uh, New South Wales about Western Sydney where there are houses that have been flooded, I think, at least twice so far this year, mm -hmm. and they're looking at a third flooding. And uh, one of the issues which has come up is, well, actually, we've allowed huge residential developments. Where? In, in flood, in flood plains. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, very similar to the situation that you've alluded to in, in Florida. So, you know, if we have a, an open and honest look a little bit down the track, the proximate cause is human folly. Yes. I mean, look, <laughs> like we all want to live on the water. We all want to live, yeah. right? Like, I mean, you look at, uh, I, I remember the, the Brisbane floods, right? Going back, what, almost 10 years now, they would have been almost maybe, yeah, or just yeah, over 10 years ago. Yeah, 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 it was 12 years ago. Um, like all, all of, like, all of the restaurants and everything right on the water were all flooded because the water rise. It's like, well, we built a dam and stopped natural water flow 
and we built all of our buildings right, right, right on the water. If if you look back in history, people would be people would say you would silly for building your your community on on the water, and we, people used to change with seasons, right? The che- the weather weather's bad here. We pack up our tents or, or their communities or whatever they do, and they just shift their tribe or, or whatever it was to a, to a different area because they'd used up that land or the resources there or the weather was going to change. But now, yeah, like like you say for folly, we, we're wanting to build our mansions right on the water. I mean, I used to I used to live um, in Kingscliff and love that area, but every time it used to flood, we were cut off. We'd lose electricity and the and all the roads in and out would all be all be flooded. Now, everyone would complain, but I'll kind of say it's like we choose to live here. We we know that that's the risk of of living here. That that's what our community has such an advantage. We right on the beach. We're you know it's a beautiful place, but when we have uh, you know crazy weather patterns, things happen. So, yeah, how how do we? As leaders, how do we find that balance between folly and just advancing? And because we're called to build and create and 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 do do new things, like that, that's great. But how do we find that balance between? I mean, we're talking about floods and obviously building in flood areas. But making that transition into just, let's talk about just normal life, how do we make sure we avoid you know, chasing folly versus chasing growth and, and healthy growth? Okay. Um, well, look, I think, say, in the context of what, you know, what we've been, been talking about, I think one has to be committed to look into the interests of others first. Yeah, that's good. And then I, I see that this incident with, with President Biden and, of course, Kamala Harris came out with, with all sorts of quite outrageous statements about how the aid was going to be <laughs> distributed and so on. To me, what's happening there is that the, the, the leaders, in this case political leaders, they are just looking for every opportunity to further their own self-interest. Mm. Uh, I think that's pretty poor conduct in leaders. Yep. Uh, leaders should be first looking to those whom they lead. Yeah. And um, I think that counts as much when we're right in the thick of a disaster as it does when we are making plans which are much longer term. So in, in the case of, say, building in an area that we know is prone to flooding or to, to hurricanes, uh, we need to take that into account when we're making plans or if we're, in a, if we're a regulatory authority, when we're approving uh, building, building projects. It, it is difficult because often it's poorer people. They mm. can't necessarily access, say, real estate uh, on higher land because that's more expensive land. And so there, there are all kinds of issues that we need to take into, into account. But it, let's say we do decide, yeah, okay, we, we will approve large residential developments in areas that we know have been prone to flooding in the past. Mm. So then what are we going to do to mitigate the effects of flooding? And, and that, that debate is, is going on as well. But often we don't see very sensible or helpful responses from politicians. Yep. So whatever kind of leadership we're in, I, I do think we need to take a leaf out of Jesus' book, literally. <laughs> we're here to serve the needs of others, yep. not ourselves. Yeah. And, you know, if making a decision is not necessarily in our immediate best interest, too bad. Yep. Yeah, that's good. So to respond, don't respond to a disaster or crisis by blaming it on other things and, and running our own agenda and trying to slip our own agenda in there and what will further us. 
because the people in the crisis, they are looking to you for leadership. They're looking to you for an answer. And if you're just going to point point the finger, that's not an answer. And how can I have faith in you? You're not you're not that that solid your foundational person that I'm like, well, okay, I, I can't rely on you if in a crisis you're just going to point the finger and, and blame. You've just been watching an excerpt from our leadership podcast. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And hey, put a comment below. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this video. And if you'd like to watch the full episode, please check out our channel. And while you're there, we'd be honored if you subscribed. Thank you.